Hello there, it's Sev here from Three Counties Motorhomes and welcome to this video guide on the control panel that you see in front of me here. Now this is quite a rare control panel, it's uh, only really features in, I've only really seen it in auto sleeper motorhomes uh, around the sort of late 2000s, so sort of 2007 through to 2010, 11-ish. Um, however, of course, it could appear elsewhere as well. It's a touchscreen control panel, um, so there's no physical buttons. Uh, but it is relatively simple to use, but it can be quite confusing because the user interface is uh, somewhat clustered. Uh, so it can be a little bit confusing at first glance. But we're going to get into all the simple operations. And uh, so hopefully by the end of the video, you'll have a good idea of how to use it for all the typical day to day features. So first things first, uh, the panel typically remains in some form of standby state, as you can see like this. So the power for the vehicle's leisure battery in this case is off, but the panel is still on. You can see we have a time displayed with a date and the day. We have two buttons here. So firstly, we have a power button, which is the IO, uh, but then we have a level button here. And if I press that, what's going to happen is this is going to allow us to level the vehicle up. So it's going to... Um, sort of help us park the vehicle or at least chock it up level. So that's quite handy. And if we press the return tab here, it should take us to the return. And if we press on off, there we go. That's now powered the vehicle up. And in this case, you can see lights and things have come on here in the kitchen area. Now, uh, as you can see, the uh, panel does have uh, a little bit more to it now that the power is on. And there was a small beeping noise when I touched the panel just to uh, alert the user that there has been a button interaction. It ha you know, your press has actually had an effect. So we've got a power on off. So that's just literally going to turn everything back off again. Um, and then we have um, a charge right here. We have the battery selected, we have the water pump selection here, and then on is for awning light. So if you have an awning light fitted, there's a good chance your vehicle will be wired to, or the awning light will be wired to that, so that if you press this, uh, it's going to turn on and off the awning light. Now, if I press either the charge word here or the picture of the battery, uh, then it's going to change the currently selected battery. So uh, at the moment, you can see we're on the habitation battery. So that's a leisure battery. Uh, if I press anywhere here, so on the battery itself, there we go. That's now switched to vehicle. Uh, and the uh, vehicle or the motorhome in this case is now connected to the vehicle battery and the battery charger on board can therefore charge that battery instead. The backlight color has also changed to a blue color. Um, now this time I'm gonna press the charge here, as you can see there, that's changed it back to habitation and it's now a slightly more purpley color um, backlight. So that's how you change your selected battery. Now, of course, just a quick note on this, this isn't so that you can switch over to your vehicle battery if your habitation battery runs out or anything like that. Never run your leisure vehicle from the vehicle battery where you have a leisure battery fitted. This is purely so that the uh, you can use the onboard battery charger that runs from mains electricity to charge both batteries at the touch of a button, basically. That's what it's for. Now, uh, turning on and off your water pump is as simple as pressing the water pump there. When it's on, it lights or, or it's shaded in black. Now, to use the rest of the features on the control panel, we simply press anywhere else than those buttons. And we're now greeted with this menu screen. So first of all, you can see we have RET. That means return. So if I press that, we get back to the screen there. Um, and then we have pretty much option buttons for everything else. So if I press the HAB battery button here, that's going to show us the habitation battery voltage. And as you can see there, we've got a nice charging voltage. It says good. Uh, if I press on the screen anywhere, we go back to the menu. I can see the same for the vehicle battery. Oh, I missed it. I pressed something else instead. There we go. There's the vehicle battery, as you can see. Now, I do believe this changes color according to the health status of said battery. So I think it goes red if... Uh, the battery is in what would be considered a uh, less than ideal voltage, for example. Now drain here, if I press that, we can see the drain on the battery, whether it's high or low. 
if I touch the button, we uh, touch the screen, we're back again. So uh, it's just one single piece of information there. Now, internal and external degree C, of course, that's your temperatures. So we have our internal temperature there. Um, so as you can see there, although in this case, that's a little bit inaccurate. Uh, we have the external temperature. That one looks a little bit more realistic. Um, and then we have front and rear, and that's actually pictures of a downlighter. It's not some sort of um, millipede or centipede or something. There. Um, so if I press front, this is turning on and off the lighting circuit uh, connected to the front of the vehicle or front of the habitation area, and then the same for the rear. Um, so again, depending on your particular installation of this control panel, uh, that may be wired to different things. It may not necessarily be to light or even the same lighting circuits but in this particular vehicle and as I've seen it in auto sleeper motorhomes that feature this control panel it does correspond to the front and rear habitation lighting circuits. Now sound here if we press this we get to choose the sound level and that's typically things like alarms and whatnot. Press the return there to go back. Um, clock set is as simple as it sounds. We can choose the year, we go accept, we choose the month, up or down we go accept and then the date of course so and then the day we can set all that. Oh and the hour and the minutes as well um, so that can all be set. Uh, we have then set up here and we can play with some other bits and bobs. Uh, these are some slightly more advanced features, so do refer to your manual for these. These aren't something you'll typically play with in a day-to-day -day basis. And again, as always, the return in the top corner takes you back, but that's essentially it. Uh, so it has all the same uh, features that a normal control panel will have. It's just in a slightly different layout. And like I say, at first glance, and sometimes the touch can be a little bit unresponsive. You have to kind of get used to where to press and how hard. Uh, but yeah, at first glance, coming and seeing a uh, menu like this can be a bit confusing. And I've just realized I did forget the fresh water. So let's quickly show you that one. So you can see the fresh water tank level there. And if we press, we're back out. Um, so there we go. So um, like I say, it's um, very simple to use when you know what you're looking for. Um, and uh, it's just as easy to use as any other control panel. I'm Sev. I hope this video has been useful and thank you very much for watching.